This is Beyond Bollywood. Priyanka Chopra, jo- Jonas. I was going to go for Jonas there, which is a problem with the pronunciation now, isn't it? <laughs> Everyone forgets it. It's okay. <laughs> no, it was my my Jonas was coming out with a Indian twang. So let me do that again. Priyanka Chopra, Jonas. It is a pleasure to have you here on my Beyond Bollywood podcast. How are you? I'm really good, Harun. It's always nice to be here talking to you. Congratulations on the release of your memoir, Unfinished. I finished it in like two days. It was a really easy <laughs> read, and and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. But I want to really, ask, yeah, yeah, I, I really, really did. Your South Asian fans feel more protective and feel more ownership over you because they've seen you since the start of your career and have followed that journey to success and may, dare I say it some of your fans feel uh, more protective of you and feel slightly like hey you Hollywood fan you don't deserve her as much as we deserve her because we've seen her right from the start there's almost like this feeling of you're one of their family that's how a lot of your South Asian f- fans feel about you are you aware of that Actually, I'm so happy you brought this up because it was something that I wanted to address. Um, I, yes, I do. I do notice, um, you know, a sense of protectiveness from a lot of people, but also, you know, a sense of cynicism from a lot of people and a sense of negativity from a lot of people that have known me for a really long time, you know, picking on me for no reason and instead of, Um, And I was talking about this to Mindy a couple of um, months ago, and we were talking about why is it that you get so much negativity from your own community, you know, as very few people who are very few brown people who are in the entertainment business in Hollywood, right there, you can count us on your, on your fingers. And what our attempt is, we're literally with our own two hands, trying to create more opportunity for people like us. So why is there so much sort of negativity for us when you know we're we're trying to do something that'll take all, which will be a win for all of us when i came and started working in um, hollywood i realized that it's it's not normal to people's consciousness that a leading man or woman can be indian in a mainstream hollywood show my name is alex parish protecting our country had always been my dream because of which I've started noticing the the difference between fans who sort of know me and are protective of me, which makes me so happy. And they're the wind beneath my wings, I'll tell you. I've done some crazy decisions in my life and those fans or well-wishers that have known me from, you know, my beginning have been the reason I felt courageous enough to do it. But I also feel disheartened and discouraged by the other side. There is an element of you staying silent through this all as well, right? And you talk about that in your book as well. You've chosen to take a bit of a distance uh, from the internet, from social media. You've chosen to be more specific with what you talk about. But for your fans, that silence is sometimes interpreted as a lack of, like, you don't care. Do you really care about us still? Do do you understand that point of view as well? I absolutely understand it. But you have to realise that, you know, when the position that I kind of find myself in, it's a no-win situation. When you speak, you are you become, you know, um, dinner table conversation and um, articles for people to talk about who you are for months onwards and decide, you know, uh, what your character is truly and decide for themselves who you really are when all you've read is two sentences. So there's no point of discussing things that first of all are not crucial enough. Second, I am a public person, I'm an actor, but my job is not dependent on people's opinions. You know, I have to focus on my work and be good at it and hope that people will enjoy it and appreciate the support that I have got, appreciate the encouragement that I have got, but actually not go head on with people whose job is only to create toxicity. That's not where I am and that's not where the world should be. As you've become more and more reclusive with sharing your views on public policy, on sharing your views on discourse and conversation generally, the fact that you stay silent, some people misinterpret as you either not having an opinion or your opinion not being what it truthfully is. And actually in your book, you talk about world peace, you talk about cross-border harmony, you talk about religious harmony, you talk about all your liberal 
views, but you won't express that necessarily on social media. And I, I because I don't trust the interpretation on my book. It's in my terms, in my words, and I, that's why I've addressed multiple things. I don't trust the interpretation of social media or the media in general. If I have a conversation with someone one on one, for sure I will have a conversation. But I'm not an elected official, you know, and I am not someone who owes anyone an explanation. But I definitely will say that I do not trust the interpretation of my words at all, especially in the world of an information where people are only cynical and looking to find fault instead of actually giving somebody the sense of encouragement that, you know, I'm already doing something which is very daunting and I'm not just doing it for myself. I revisited a lot of your early work over the last few weeks, knowing that your book was about to release. And I went through all your amazing songs that I grew up as a teenager watching and enjoying. And I just want a quick reaction when I mention the name of these songs. So when okay. I mention Biar Aya from Plan, what do you see? What's the first thing you see? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was I, I see the song, I see the set, I see that blue skirt that I was wearing and I see a really tiny waist, which I'm very sad about losing. Um, <laughs> I also see Sanjay Dutt, the first time I was working with Sanjay sir. I really remember that song very well, actually. I love that song. I think it's great. Another I love song, that song too. Another song that I probably don't remember, I, I don't um, love the audio as much, but I love the video is mahi 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 menu challa pawa de kich meri photo te but vich pa de mahi 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 menu challa pawa de kich meri photo te but vich la de for a really long time actually it's very funny um i didn't want to sound stupid so i thought it was saying because i don't speak i didn't understand the song i thought it was saying <laughs> but vich la de so put it in your butt <laughs> the longest time i shot the song the movie came out but it actually was butwe ichlad <laughs> you know what priyanka i didn't want to say but i thought exactly the same when i first heard it <laughs> but i was in it and i was so new i i didn't want to sound stupid so i didn't ask the question it was many years later that somebody explained to me that it was butwe ichlad <laughs> You are an excellent actress, but how did you keep a straight face when you had to mime the lyrics, I want to make love to you and do me a favor, let's play holy. Well, the same way when every holy you play that song and dance to it. <laughs> It's a good song, you know, you can't deny it. It's and um, everyone consumes it. Listen, we can make fun of everything that we we watch, but you end up watching it, right? So while you watch it, we're going to make it. <laughs> but how do you keep a straight face when you have to act? I didn't. Um, um, I didn't before and after. I was like, you know, oh, okay, I would say... Okay, we have to say this and we have to sing it. And you know, you have to kind of come make peace with it. It's my job. I can't judge my job. I can't judge my characters. Um, you know, you kind of have to be honest to it. And that's what I did. Lal Dupatta is one of the most iconic wedding songs in Bollywood film history. Lal Dupatta. Lal Dupatta. When you wore your red Sabya Sachi Langa walking down the palace at your wedding, did you play lal dupatta at your wedding wearing a, a red langa no you know this is really one thing i want to talk about i think people think with actors that our jobs become us like the characters that i play is really me or the fact that i'm singing like that that's what i probably do in my life guys it's a job i become somebody else i walk into a set a movie set i go into a trailer I, you know, people put makeup, hair, clothes on me. Somebody gives me dialogue. Somebody gives me lyrics. Somebody tells me where I have to stand. And I dance. 
that's yeah. literally my job. So when I'm doing my own wedding, I'm not going to be consumed by my work. So you didn't play Lal Dupatta once? No. Lal Chunaria, you had a song called Lal Chunaria as well? Did I have a song called Lal Chunaria? Lal Chunaria. In God to see great ho. Oh yes, no, but no. My favorite look of Priyanka Chopra in the mid noughties is from Bersat. I think you looked incredible in Bersat. The way you were styled, the title track, Aja Aja, Sajan Sajan Sajan. What is your favorite Priyanka Chopra from the mid noughties? Uh, hmm. 2000s, you mean? Yeah, 2000s, yeah. Um, oh my gosh, you're one of the very few people that have seen Barsat, by the way. Thank you for, <laughs> for doing that. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, second of all, I think my favorite would be the one from Etraz, you know? kind of found my power when I was doing that movie you know I wasn't afraid of my surroundings I wasn't I wasn't so new that I didn't know what I was doing and I wasn't confident enough on set in front of all the major players but at the same time I was still young enough in the business to not know any better so I kind of just did it um, but I, I was finding my sense of self as an actress at that time all of these people from the movie industry that I had sort of grown up with walking up to me and telling me that I was great in the movie, that it was, you know, they saw me. I'll never forget that feeling. You know, in the song, uh, Right Here, Right Now, you are a full on, like R&B superstar. What R&B superstar were you channeling? I think probably one of those late 90s. Like to me, it was very TLC. You know, my R&B world was Destiny's Child, TLC. I grew up to Dre and Puff Daddy and Mace and Diddy and Biggie. And the soundtrack also lent itself, the song lent itself to that kind of vibe. So it was just like, you know, the queens in me came out. <laughs> Out of these songs, Desi Girl obviously is the ultimate. That is your like anthem, wherever you go, it will be played. But are you sick of hearing it yet? Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes when, not hearing it, I love hearing it. But sometimes when it plays at a party and like I'm pulled up to do the step for the 500th time, um, but I still enjoy it, you know, it's so crazy. Every time I do it, it feels like it's a, it's sort of a definition of who I am. Tarun, who's the director of the movie and, you know, still one of my closest friends, I always tell him, I feel like it, it, it defines me. You gave me a nickname almost, you know, yeah. like this is my, this is my Bollywood nickname. You know what? Not many people can say this. I can say I've actually danced to that song with you in our BBC studio. So that's my claim to fame. I did this <laughs> girl with Priyanka Chopra. Nice. Uh Priyanka, before we wrap this up, I just want to say a special thank you to you because in your book, you chose not to mention Southall, not to mention Birmingham, not to mention Bradford. But Hounslow, which is where I'm talking to you from right now, Hounslow gets a mention in Priyanka Chopra Jonas's uh, book. So a big thank you for that. Have you ever <laughs> been to Hounslow? Yes, I have. I think I shot something there many years ago. I know you've come here for the Love Story 2050 premiere. You've come here- And for Krish, the premiere and for Krish. Krish premiere and Teri Meri Kahani even, I think was in Feltham, the, the premiere. Yes, for sure. All near here. Um, look, you're always welcome for any Desi Khanna that you want. Right oh, now. I'll be very happy. Please tell all of the Desi restaurants in London, I'm here for a month, for a year. I'm literally here till November. Please send me Kharka Khanna. I'll mm -hmm. be very happy. <laughs> Priyanka, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Harun. The Beyond Bollywood Podcast.